So here we are, uh, a get together. Uh, Dan B. C. is in Southern California with Tracy Bassman now. Uh, so lucky to be able to get together with Dan and talk to him about the exciting event that we're putting together in December of this year for the sequential record in Australia. So Tracy's got a few questions for Dan. And yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, hi, Dan. Thanks for um, thanks for leading us here in uh, Southern California. And uh, first of all, we just want to do a series of interviews. And the first one, um, I'd just like to highlight basically what you're doing in Paris. So first of all, if you could just give us some idea for our audiences in Australia. Um, and this is an Aussie Big Ways exclusive interview <laughs> of Dan BC. Uh, so tell me, what is your job at Paris Valley? My job in Paris, I'm officially, the title is the management of Paris, which, as you know from being in the drop zone, includes just about anything that, that needs to be done. Um, mostly I try to be involved with, with all aspects of it. You know, we have so many really good people at Paris that I don't actually have to uh, micromanage anything. Uh, we've got great people that run the school, that run the, the airplanes, the pilots, uh, the wind tunnel, manifest, restaurant. I mean, Paris is a, a big drop zone. Uh, there's about close to 100 people who work there to some capacity or another full time. Um, and I really just try to keep the whole thing running smooth, keep everybody working together, uh, keep it fun, keep it safe. I mean, the best thing about any drop zone uh, is the community that you build inside of it. And it's difficult sometimes on a really big drop zone to have that same club, family uh, atmosphere. You know, at a nice small club, everybody knows each other. Everybody's jumping together. And we try to keep that, keep that at Paris too. So a lot of the organizers are also instructors. Uh, and when students get off with student status, they're merely welcomed into the whole community. Uh, people of all different disciplines are sharing the airplanes, sharing the skies, uh, really looking out for each other. Uh, and really showing each other the love and respect that they deserve. So um, I don't know what my job is in that, but trying to help create that kind of a place, that kind so of So you're jumping each day? You're jumping in groups? I, I am not necessarily jumping every day, but I, I jump a lot. Yeah, yeah. great. And uh, so this summer, um, do you have any world records that you're organizing at the drop zone or national records? Uh, well, we've got a POPs record coming up this fall. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, what's a POPs record? A POPs record is a parachutist over 40 oh, society okay. record, which, uh, which is, includes a lot of people at, the, at this point. You know, when I first started jumping, uh, nobody, nobody made it to 40. You know, they, it was just too rough of a sport back then. I mean, I've been jumping for 36 years after. Uh, but uh, people, it was, the equipment was too heavy, the landings were too hard. You really didn't meet anybody that was over 40. Uh, and now, the skydiving is, has become, uh, the equipment is so good, the training is so good now, that people never really quit. Uh, so now, over 40 is, is, is nothing. You know, it's, uh, I think the average age for skydivers is, is closer to the mid 40s. Now, only mostly because people still start when they're 18, but they never stop. We've got people in their 70s and 80s jumping all the time at Paris, and it's, it's great. It's one of the things that I, I love about it. But the pops record is just people over, over 40. And what sort of size are you going for? Is that about 140. So, what is the current pops record? I believe it's 121. Okay. Very similar to the Aussie record. Yep. That will call. Great. So, just to change um, a bit of tech on the next question. Uh, so, you were a, you are a four-way world champion. I was. Indeed. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, how many times did you, did you win at the world? Uh, the world championships we won in '95 and '97. And then an eight-way in '99 in Australia. That's great. Thank you. And so, can you tell me uh, how does a four-way world champion move into big ways? What what made you uh, gravitate to this um, discipline, to this sport? You know, it starts with that I just love skydiving in general. I mean, there is nothing. I don't love about it. It's kind of sick, really. I can't believe I still love it as, as much as I do. I've been doing it as long as I have. Uh, I love doing the big ways. I love four-way. I love doing uh, AFF. 
uh, do tandems, I love organizing jumps with all sorts of groups and skydivers at different levels. Um, and the one thing I really love the most about Big Ways is, is the team that it takes. To have a, have a goal with 100 people, 200 people, 300 people, and all of you really counting on each other and relying on each other and putting everything forward so that you can, for this special 80 seconds, you can all pull it together and do your very best. Uh, it's just a, a magical thing, and I think that great examples of that have been the last two Aussie records in Paris. Uh, for anyone who was there and, and participated, uh, the record, uh, maybe it was four years ago now, or five years ago, uh, where people came uh, to the camps leading up to the record who hadn't been on big ways before, but got the training they needed in, we put the whole group together, and the last day we did three consecutive records, one after another after another, which was completely un unheard of. Usually you get one record in, and the party starts, and everybody goes crazy, but we got the record, I think it was the first load of the day, and, and we had more people we could still put on, and we thought, man, let's, let's try it again. But to, to pull that together, that energy together, that everybody do the very best again, it takes a lot to have everybody at their very best, a hundred some people. So what people. is it about that, that enthuses you? It's just magic. It's, it's yeah. magic to share it with everybody like this. Yeah. Um, so this, what makes Big Ways cool in your eyes? What makes it exciting and cool and challenging? It's, it's, uh, it's the group effort. You know, it's, it's really, it's back to the same thing. That's the thing that's most challenging about it. The actual skills that it takes, the actual experience that it takes, uh, is not, you don't need to have a, a whole group of, of world champions to do it. You need to have people who are very competent, uh, who are, who, whose skills are, are sharp, but they don't have to be super, you know, four, eight way, 16 way, whatever. They have to be good, competent skydivers. Uh, they have to have a good headspace. They need to be able to stay very calm and evaluate everything that's going on because there's a lot going on on big ways and four ways. When you've practiced a lot, it, it pretty well goes close to how you plan it. But in a big way with a hundred different people or more, it, it never goes exactly as you plan it. You have to have people who can read the place, see the situation, uh, and, and still make it work. Um, and that takes, that takes a lot. It takes a special group of people and a special mindset to make it happen. Great. Thank you, Dan. Now, that will end the uh, first interview with Dan, and uh, next month we'll continue on this interview for the second uh, interview with Dan BC. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.